Hi, good morning. My name is Yvonne and welcome to Storytime Craft with me. Last Friday evening, I told the story of a missing goddess, a story from the land of Egypt. Along with this story, I decided to do two simple crafts. One is a more complex and I'm going to show it to you right now. But the first which I will do on the spot with you here is a doodling one. I'll show you this one. So this is, I'm going to do it with you right now. But the earlier one that I've completed and I will deal with in the tutorial is a piece paying homage to Malaysian art. A batik inspired doodling modern art piece with all you need is a marker pen and some watercolors. Sun set against land. I think it's quite pretty. What do you think? Okay, so now let's go back to our first one, which I'm going to do with you. This is a doodling exercise. It might seem simple to many, but it is actually quite complex. I'm going to explain how you're going to do it. With very young children, if you have a young child or a young student in the preschool age, the whole exercise, the objective of this exercise is to develop muscle control. So we are going to encourage the child or your student to do it as precisely as he can and develop both, you can see, straight lines and circular motions. For an older learner, such as an adult, or even a primary or sec secondary school child, the whole point of this exercise is to develop the mastery. You, I will take out the Bloom's taxonomy again so that we can take a look. This is something that I spoke this week, so I'm going to highlight again in this tutorial. For very young children, we are going for muscle control and memory to remember how to do these strokes in your muscles itself. But when you are a more advanced learner and you are grown, we are going to apply it do it in different forms, which that's what we are doing here. It's done in various forms. So you have straight lines, circles, you have to shade in, so on and so forth. And by the time you are confident and you're feeling good about what you're doing, you are going to bring this work right up to the top, which is to create new pieces, to combine, to combine all these strokes and lines and make it into a complex which is found here. See? Okay. So if you are an adult or a young or if you are an adult or a primary or secondary school student, your task is to draw these boxes and make it as precise in dimension. For example, I'm going to give you this one. You can see I made a, a little bit of a mistake here because there's a gap. So as you draw, you're going to repeat this exercise over and over again, over time. Each time, trying to make it better and more accurate. So there is a brick. Then there's one with dimension of perspective, circle and straight lines. One that just practices straight lines and proportion. And these are swirlies. If you can see, for a young learner, if we go back to the preschool age, a young learner will actually use both I'm going to do it for you to see circular motions and straight lines for the writing. Are you ready? Let's do it. I'm going to, I'm going to show you one on the spot. Okay? Let's do it. Let's go. For the first one, we are going for brick. So a thicker line and a smaller line. We're going to make a small brick and a big brick. Now we're going to round the edges and the corners. There you go. For the second one, we are going to do a perspective like a sunlight that's coming out. And into it, we're going to fill it up with circles. Got to be very, very careful with this one. And we're going to shade in the blanks between. The whole point, as I said, is to develop mastery and confidence do it mindfully with purpose make it as as you do you can repeat this many times and as you do make it as perfect as you can straight lines to be straight circles to be pure circles and the third one is a seashell so we're going to start from one corner make it neat 
and pretty, be mindful. This teaches a lot of patience, develop your hand-eye coordination for young children and for, for bigger learners, it's to develop just basically tenacity. Oh, there you go. Quite pretty. There you have it. And the final one, this one, try to go for precision. Oh, there's an airplane above. One of the reasons why I love working out here is I just want to share with everyone the sound from nature and what that we have outside. And I like that a lot. You may get your young students or children to do this. It's exciting. You can use, I use black pen, but you can use marker pen colors, crayons, pencil colors. After you have done this, you can ask the children to color them in. For example, it is an exercise of precision, similar to letter forming, but this is more exciting because it's not ABC. Who wants ABC? ABC is boring. But this, now this one is exciting. This is unique. It gives children a different sense of purpose. It covers basically circles, straight lines, vertical and horizontal lines and diagonal so this is this is purposefully done and created in such a way to encourage young students that to develop their pencil grip and as i said for older children for adults it's the whole point is to develop precision to get your muscles in control to create mindfulness and consciousness in your doodling and drawing the second one, which I which you've done earlier, and I'm going to make the tutorial of this, is a nice piece of bate. Ah, how about that? I hope you like this. This is very simple to be. This might look complex. I don't know. How does it look to you? Does it look complex or easy to you? This is very bate inspired. When I was doing this, I realized that the ink runs. So if you 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 are mindful about this. Try to look for a marker pen that doesn't run, the ink doesn't run. This one ran a little, but then again, I, I suppose it created a very batik sort of feeling which I liked. So, this is next up. This is going to be the next one up. It's batik inspired piece of art that's based on the story of the sun god and the missing goddess. I hope you're going to enjoy this tutorial. Remember how to utilize this and bring up, bring your child or your students work up every week as you go. For this project, you will need marker pen in black, watercolor and palette and drawing paper. Roughly draw three lines with pencil approximately one inch apart. Then on the middle line, draw two final lines. From this point, you use a marker pen to fill up the land. You will use straight vertical, horizontal and diagonal lines. You may also use squares like I did. Next, proceed to draw the sun. Create several half circles, then fill them up again using all the lines that you have learned in the earlier doodling practice. Next, you will create the sun rays. Draw curvy lines Spread out like a sun ray, then fill them out using marker pen. To emphasize the sun rays, I decided to use more spirals within the rays themselves. This creates such a magnificent and magical feeling. Give it a try! Now the fun begins. Take out your watercolors and create all the colors to represent the field as well as the sun. For the field in shades of green, you may use 
any green that you have in your collection or create a new shade using blue and yellow. Experiment and have lots of fun with it. Watercolour is a suitable medium for this particular project because it creates a watery feeling across the painting. Be mindful of the water that you put in. Make sure that it's clean and untainted with other colours. You will find that at certain spots, you need to just put plain water, then dab a little bit of paint. Allow the paint to seep into the other part of the water and it just it creates a contrast and shade on the particular painting and it's pretty. You will notice this technique more evidently in the green section of the field as well as the clouds in blue. Take note of your colour composition. Remember to use both complementary and contrasting colours. Now, for the swirls, I decided to use two or three colours. In most of the swirls, I started with a yellow, then with a little bit of purple, and balanced the rest of it with some kind of green. I decided to fill the sun rays with dots of yellow because it seemed rather blank. So if you would like to do the same, just dot larger and smaller dots in between the spirals to fill up the space. Just try to find a balance between all those designs. If you're impatient like me, just use a hairdryer to dry out the painting and you are done. Well, that's it. I'm done. I hope you find these two crafts inspiring and exciting project for this weekend. Please join me again next week for the next tutorial. And remember, have a good weekend and we are all creators of happy human beings. Goodbye. If you like this tutorial, please give it a like and subscribe.